Novelist Stephen King has frightened Americans with vampires, interdimensional clowns, and crazed dogs. In his latest novel, Holly, he's out to terrify us again. And this time his villain is two elderly Republicans. Yeah. Holly follows private detective Holly Gibney on a case in 2021. And boy, are things stressful. She's cried so much lately. Tears of relief after Biden won the election. She cried during and after the Capitol riot. Those were tears of rage. This is an old trick to establish sympathy for our hero detective, like in The Maltese Falcon when Sam Spade has a weeping fit reading the newspaper. But it's not only politics that has her crying. Holly must deal not only with the limitations and stress imposed by the rampaging COVID pandemic, but also with the recent death of her mother, who didn't believe COVID, the illness that killed her, was real and refused to get vaccinated. Haunting. She even had Jimmy Kimmel give the eulogy. Rest in peace, Wheezy. Here's how Holly felt about her mother. An avid Trump supporter, a fact she trumpeted to her daughter at every opportunity, she refused to get the vaccinations or to even wear a mask, except that was at Kroger and her local bank branch, where they were required. The one Charlotte kept for those occasions was a bright red with MAGA stamped on it. Not only did her mom die, she also, gasp, voted for the president. In Holly, our tortured hero is on the hunt for a missing girl named Bonnie. A few blocks from where Bonnie was last seen is the home of Rodney and Emily Harris, two white college professors in their 80s. Emily taught English and belies the notion that all college professors are woke. She's as viciously racist and homophobic as they come. Rodney has his own obsession, diet. A biologist and nutritionist, he earned the nickname Mr. Meat from students for his classroom diatribes about what humans should eat. So basically the Petersons in age makeup. And that's not the worst of it. The worst happens in their basement. All right, so what happens in their basement? Stephen King posted a warning to his Twitter followers that his new novel contains a few fairly gruesome scenes. So I assumed the basement is where the couple read each other Huckleberry Finn, like a couple of real sickos. But it's stupider than that. The husband and wife kidnap local liberals, put them in cages in their soundproof basement where they force them to eat raw liver. Then the couple murder their victim, drink their blood, and eat their brains, and use the body fat as lotion. Now, I understand some people don't like spoilers, but when the spoilers are this dumb, I feel like it should be fair game. Their victims include a gay Hispanic novelist and a young black vegan lesbian who was persecuted by her church for her vegan beliefs. Holly and her boy genius sidekick Jerome discover that these disappearances are linked and put the elderly white monsters in their place. At least I assume they do. I didn't finish the book. According to NPR, this is one of King's most political novels, but most of you will be familiar with his other political writing. You might remember such trenchant analysis as Trump too chicken to debate. Guess he's not an alpha male after all. And Trump sucks. Can we just move on? King also has opinions on international affairs. Here he is wearing his favorite book signing hat. Please don't put me in video. Thank you. The world's leading expert on who the good guys and bad guys are. But maybe I'm the crazy one. The reviews for Holly have been glowing. Please, Mr. King, give us more Holly soon. King's storytelling skills are not dimming one bit. The AARP called it chilling and is number one on the New York Times bestseller list. So, with all the success, I imagine we'll get a lot more of this from Stephen King. He's old, he's educated, and he's carrying out secret lynchings in his backyard. He's Clarence. King has some talent, but to write a good book, you have to be in touch with how the world works. It's the same thing we looked at with late night comedy. People are saying that Stephen King has changed, but people rarely change at a basic level. Mostly people just become more consistent over time. Their underlying beliefs work their way into everything. Trump and COVID just accelerated that process for these guys. So yeah, it's changed, but it's just his long held beliefs congealing into a lumpy goo. Stephen King, the late night hosts, they were always this way. They've just become more publicly consistent to a point where it's harder not to notice. But there are writers who do understand the world. Tom Wolfe, Charles Portis, Walter Kern, not to mention a lot of the classics. You're way better off spending your time on these than reading the latest Stephen King and watching late night TV. Sure, they used to be more entertaining, but now their work is just variations of tears of rage. Tears of rage.